Hey. Yo, what up, world? It's your boy Jeff, aka Cool Boy Jeff, right here. That's the only place you can find a wave. It's the wave 804. Hey, this is like, I would no. Matter of fact, I had a uh my homegirl on the other day. She's a female comedian that she's on here. Uh, I did an interview with her, but I never did an interview with the male comedian. I, I I'm not mistaken. I don't think I have. But uh, this is my guy right here, Jordan B. Man, shout out to my guy for let me do this on uh, this interview. Man, it's definitely an honor to be able to do it. But I ain't gonna talk too much, man. Let everybody know who you is, real quick. Man, uh, your local neighborhood comedian, my nigga Jordan B. <laughs> uh, my way of Southwest Virginia. If I told you the town I'm from, you wouldn't know. So just say I'm between Blacksburg and Raft. But I hail from Christiansburg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everybody in rapper, man. My boy DJ Leak, bro, the whole Savage ENT. I know all about that, man. Shout out. Oh, to you know man. the Savage ENT? Yo. Yeah, hey. man. It's a small one. Hey, bro, this is about to be a funny ass interview, bro. Like, I, I you know what's crazy? The last time I was out there was for my homeboy's uh uh birthday. Or oh, he had an event and we was out there in Blacksburg and uh I think it's called I don't think it's called Sharkies. It's called Melodies or Sharkies. It's something like that. I don't know. Oh, nigga, you was at Melodies, bro? Yeah, I was at Melodies. Yeah, I was at Melodies. Uh, yeah, I was out nah, there recording this shit, bro. Spot. Yeah, man, but enough of that, man. So we're going to go ahead and get into you, man. So basically, I just want to understand, like, what was the upbringing like, you know what I'm saying, when it came into, like, comedy? Uh, I mean, it really wasn't much of an upbringing. I... No, you look at a year and a half in, and I just been out here grinding. Um, I really, I really just wanted to do it. I guess starting with like I brought my podcast back, and like that shit started gaining traction, and like everybody was just like, "Yo, you should try to." Like I'm even thinking to myself, like, "Okay, what can I do? I can't just be the podcast guy. I need something that goes with." Facts. So I was like, "Shit, let's do stand up." So. Just one night, uh, we got a spot up here in Blacksburg. You might have heard of it, uh, Bull and Bones. Okay. They had a uh, they had a comedy night. Uh, I messaged the dude, see if they were gonna do it. He's like, "Yeah, I show up. There's only three, me and two other comedians." So he almost don't do it, but I didn't buy the crowd with me. So he's just like, "I right, mean, we can do it, man. Just let me know." And this is my first time. He made me the closer, which that's not supposed to be for my first time. Facts. So, <laughs> It was me, two other comedians, one other comedian. He showed up real quick. Mm -hmm. And then I just did my thing. I did, I did like 15 minutes. We snapped off. And then from there, we just, we've been on it ever since, man. All right, man. So you had that first 15 minutes. What was it like? You know what I'm saying? Again, you had to close. But within that 15 minutes, like, how did you feel when you were starting to present yourself to the audience? Boy, nerves, man. I was like. Cause I, I've always been on the stage. Like I used to do music. Uh, even back in school, I used to be, you know, run the pep rallies and shit, whatever they needed. Like, oh, we need you on the mic, like Tiny Trotters. I'm over here calling the midgets by mistake, fucking up. But <laughs> like, so, so I've always been on the stage. But telling jokes was different. Like I had maybe three jokes that I had somewhat halfway put together, and I was like, all right, we just gonna run with it, see what happens. Uh, I went with my closer, which was a 21 at the time. It was called the diaper change position. And from there, I was just surprised they laughed, bro. That's the biggest thing. I'm on stage and think, like, they laughing at this dumb shit for real? <laughs> but, hey, I'm talking about R. Kelly and Elvis. Like, I was just up there saying whatever. But I think it's me being so proud. Oh my so God, bro! You talking the underage shit, yo? You're funny. No, man. no, I was talking. I was mad because how <laughs> Elvis get a movie and R. Kelly get locked up the same week. Like Elvis was, you know, doing what he do. Like that, that pissed me off, bro. So I had to really go. <laughs> like, 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 what do you think he was helping her with her man? I was like, no, nah, he's helping her physical education. Get the fuck out of here. Facts. <laughs> I was weak as hell. Nah, bro. Hey, uh, outside question. Did you feel like, uh, did you feel some type of way when they had, I don't think it was either him or Bill Cosby that had got slapped with a sandwich. <laughs> oh, that was Bill Cosby. They a hot dog at him? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yo, they, bro. I'm sorry, but I don't, yo, that shit was funny. I'm sorry. That shit was pure comedy. That shit was hilarious. Yeah, there ain't no pudding pops in here, Bill. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, they go. Yeah, they go get you some. Yeah, Lizzie's and ramen in here, my brother. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. Your dad, that was definitely nasty. <laughs> uh, so, now you had that. You was telling those jokes. How was it afterwards when, you know, you got finished, you know, how was that when everybody was giving you recognition for what you did? Yeah, yeah. Everybody was showing love. Like, the homies were, like, even some of the people there. Like, that was really, like, my first taste, like, all right, I might have something here. When you got people you ain't never met coming up to you, oh, that was so great. Oh, you so funny. Oh, I like your set. And I'm like, dog, I'm still surprised that it worked. Like, and then you got the people, how long you been doing comedy? Oh, this is my first night. <laughs> like, oh, your first night here? No. First night in general. Like, oh, wait. But it, it was it was a dope feeling, man. Like, that that's that's an addictive feeling. I can't even lie, man. People enjoying your work. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can get used to this on the road. That's what's up. So, you did that, and... What was the mental conversation for yourself? Because again, like you did get a uh, you did get a good reaction from everybody that was there, and then in your head, was there anything that you kind of had to add on, or you probably want to work? You know, since I kind of like critiquing your work. You know, even though they was happy for you, you know what I'm saying. But did you feel like is there some things that you may have to work on too going forward? Oh yeah, yeah, and I, I still been thinking about that. The biggest thing was me that I really wanted to work on, which I knew, like, talking to my homies, trying to prep me beforehand, was just pacing. Mm-hmm. Not going up there rushing through everything. And I still catch myself sometimes. Now I might be going too fast, but now I'm sort of used to, like, all right, I can catch myself going too fast. Let's chill for a little bit. Let's really let these punchlines hit. So that was just the biggest thing. Timing is just delivery. Like, make sure I don't put the punchline before the joke and slip over my words. I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. Mm-hmm. So that's just the two biggest things. Just make sure you deliver right and just pace it. You don't want to sound too too rushed up there. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right, that de- that definitely makes sense. So from there, where's the next point? Are you still, you know, you want to do more shows or are you getting booked? How's that going for you then? Oh no, this last year, not even last year. This last six months been crazy. I have been making hella shots out here. I mean, I've been. Basically on a mini tour, if you want to say. Me and my homie joke about calling shit a tour. But, uh, I mean, I've been going through Tennessee, starting to hit North Carolina. Definitely working home. Just, I mean, I definitely get booked now. In, in the beginning, it was hard when you had to reach out to people. You pray you get five minutes. You go on up here, not even making a buck, but just making a name for yourself. I just took that time and really put my head down to try to work on my craft, get my name out there now. Homies hit me up. Hey, I got a gig for you, or we'll do we'll, like I could go out and get work, but also it's nice that people hit me up and get booked. That lets me know my shit's being respected. So that's, that, what's that's up. really how it is. Yeah, that's what's up. So, what are the main uh, places that you do comedy at around your area? Uh, around here, uh, let's see. We got Bull and Bones, the Milk Parlor. Uh, Sharkies, that's just in my neck of the woods. But mainly, I've been going out to Roanoke. Uh, there's a spot called Coffee Pot and another spot called Ursula's Cafe. I've really been working out there a lot. Uh, hitting open mics when I can. There's a place, Big Wood Glory. I hit those open mics. I really just work whoever has it. Just, the thing about this area, there is no real comedy club. So the homies, they just got to take what they get. And from there, we turn it into what it is. So. Just trying to work around the area, get as much work, even if I'm not booked, pull up. You know, they got an open mic, give me some practice runs in. I'm I'm everywhere, though. Mm-hmm. Really. Wherever you see a comedy show, you'll probably see me. Got you. So, was there somewhere that, well, other than going to these places and you're uh, performing, where are some spots that you went to that you actually kind of seen like a difference? Because you know it's a difference between you being in your hometown and you going somewhere else. So how was that for you? You know what I'm saying? Did you get the same type of reaction or was it different for you? Uh, probably the best place. I don't even say the best place and the motherfuckers ain't going to book me. One of the dopest places was a spot called The Listening Room out in Pigeon Forge. And then people show me so much love. It's almost like I'm a resident out there. Like, <laughs> And for real, like, I won the competition there. They seen me do that. And then I got to double back, do the show with Josh Prey. And I just had so many people come out. 
and like you just wanted to see me again. Like some people was only there to see me, which I was like, I appreciate that so much. I mean, Josh Brady though too. Shout out my homegirl Nicole Barnes, she dope too. But the fact that they was like, we came to see you, that, that meant anything to me. I, I love pigeon boys. I love those people. Like, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Now, you say you traveled to Tennessee, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How was it out there, man, when you went out there to Tennessee? Tennessee's dope, bro. They really, I'm not going to lie, they're a little stern. I mean, they're going to laugh at what they want to laugh at. But once you chip away at them, they show you love. But Tennessee is a dope spot. I went to the Wallace Theater. It's like just a little box, basically, that you perform in. But that's a dope place. That's in John- Knoxville? No, Johnson City. It's somewhere. Don't get me lying. I've been, it's somewhere in Tennessee. Yeah. But nah, Tennessee, they, they show a lot of love. They just, yeah, they, they, they like what they like. So, much respect to Tennessee, though. I love working out on the road. That's, yeah, that's a good way to explain it. All right. So, now, as far as the <laughs> fun, fun questions. Now, when you're building up a name for yourself that comes with some type of, like, notoriety right you starting to grow you starting to do some big things is there anything that kind of like changed in your personal life that was like oh shit like damn this is what comes with the perks you know what i'm saying uh no not really not much to share i mean people they'll come and show me love now i'm like oh you know, i've seen this i've seen that like i respect that like that's cool mm-hmm. as far as that aspect but nothing too much has really changed other than you know Comedy shows around here. I'm one of the names that, like, I guess, marquee name, you want to say? Mm-hmm. But, not, but not too much say. Not yet. I think it's just still early. I mean, I've done some fly shit along the way. There's been a couple green rooms that was loaded full of shit. I was like, okay, I can get used to this shit. Uh, that's hard. That's hard. Well, yo, I ain't going to hold you, man. That's, that's really tough because when you be in those spaces and it's like, damn, I can see myself, like, being in the same space but going to a larger crowd. Now, has it been anybody, like, famous or somebody that just, like, you know, stumbled over your work and just like, hey, keep it up and stuff like that? Uh, no, nah, which, uh, I don't know. I guess the algorithms, you got to play that game. But, I mean, I guess the most known or, I guess, semi-famous. He is famous. I don't know how you look at it with the followers. He got four million. <laughs> Jesus. But I think it was Josh Prey probably. When I met him, like, he was a cool-ass dude. And what's funny, because we had the show together, and, like, he comes backstage. I'm already in the green room. We're just geeking. Three minutes into the conversation, my man's looking at me. He's like, I got to apologize to you, bro. I'm like, what the hell? What you doing? He's like, I thought you was lame this whole time, but you really a cool-ass nigga. I'm like, bro, how you going to do this? I mean, you based off a of picture, but, I mean, that's a cool ass dude. I was talking with Josh Frey Heavy. He he said some real shit to me back backstage. And I was just like, you fucking right. Like, I can't even argue with you on that. But he, he gave me some gems. And, you know, that's a cool ass dude. We definitely going to be working together some more. That's, that's probably the only famous person that really, you know, gave me some respect on that aspect. I got you. Have you ever sent any of your work to anybody that's famous or anything like that, too? Uh, nah, I've tried to enter into some shit that. You know, some semi-famous people might be in, like, Don't Tell Comedy. I just sent my film off to them so much, but I just guess the film wasn't good. But I don't, I don't really look at it like, want to send the famous people, because this is going to sound crazy, but, like, the internet comedians, you don't want to send nothing to them, because mostly when they're on stage, they're just doing the shit that they do on the internet. Basically. So if they see a, so if they see a joke that they like, they just going to run off with the shit, because they know them, so. All right. That's the tricky thing about comedy. I got to be real, like, close net with my shit. I can't just send it everywhere, but if somebody got a show and it's on supply shit, I'm definitely gonna send it off. Let's do that. Yeah. And whoever there, whoever there, I'm, I say whoever had. I, I believe the universe put people in rooms for a reason. So That's true. Like that happened. That's true. Now, is there anything that you kind of get surprised about your work ethic sometimes? So you're like, damn, I never knew I can do that. Or I never know this can get me here because you said like about the universe put you in certain places. Like, how does that work out for you? Um, dog, I'm getting to do what I do now, man. Just from seeing where I started, just working bars and shit, not getting paid. Uh, maybe, you know, one person might like it. I mean, there, there was a stretch where I just couldn't, I couldn't hit it all on stage. And it, it's a different time now with 
Motherfuckers don't do no more. They get real quiet. <laughs> take a long sip of their beer, and you got to be like, shit, all right, well, next one. But <clears throat> just hitting the trenches <clears throat> and just working on the shit. And now I got it crafted to, like, where I can actually work with it. Mm-hmm. The doors that shit's opening for me is crazy. Just, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's a fun it's a fun time. I'm seeing these jokes to really take me where I want to go. I just got to figure out the formula to, you know, how that shit work for me. Mm-hmm. And then we can go wherever right with it. I like to hear it. What's more do you see for yourself? Like, are you going to start doing skits? Are you doing skits? You know what I'm saying? Anything else like that? Or do you kind of stay more so to the stand-up comedy side? Uh, I've been thinking about that all day. I don't want to be the skit guy. Like, no knock you ever do it. I just don't want to do the skits, I, but I have to play the internet. But really, I just want to stick to the stand-up, find some sort of niche online just to get my name out there, because that right there with a follow and help sell those tickets. But I want when people to see me, it's just a pure stand-up. That's, that's really what I love doing. That's just fun to me. It, it's hard for me to, you know, do what these dudes doing, set up a camera, play eight different characters, like I'm Eddie Murphy in the clubs and some shit like that. I ain't, I ain't got the time for it, bro. Yeah, like, that's a lot of that I, energy, bro. Bro, what you got set the camera here, set it here, put on an outfit, put on a wig, do what? I ain't got the fucking job, bro. No. I, let me write some jokes and I'll, whatever happened, happened, but, I, shit, if you, you know, do shit, happen, I'll do you. I sit there and come up with some shit on the spot, I'd be like, knock, knock. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather do that. I'd rather do that. I ain't about to sit here doing hella skits. I feel like that's the reason why I don't be too much on TikTok. Like, I'll watch it, but as far as like doing certain shit, like shit like I used to, I'm like, man, I'd be tired as hell coming from work. Yeah, I ain't got time to set up no camera. All right, so today I'm going to put it in there, but I'm like a white bitch and I can't cook. And like, nigga, I ain't, no, I'm not going to do all that. And I, I'm, I'm trying to find my niche online. And what's funny, I got a whole joke set. This is going to sound hypocritical, I said. But I got like a whole part of my set. Just me talking about reasons why I hate the internet. And that shit goes over. So I'm thinking about just translating that to the online shit and doing that. But kids, food reviews, all that other nut shit, I ain't got time. <laughs> let, me just, let me just talk shit for a minute and post it, see what happens. Somebody going <laughs> to. Shit. Hey, you know, it's crazy. I don't know if you know the uh, rapper V's from Detroit. Uh, he got that song called uh, This Is Not A Drill. Nah, I'm not too familiar with that. All right, so I'm going to get you hip. So basically, he, he, he made a comment about, you know, we need to remove uh, freestyles. Like, you know, from the mic hanging down and people be rapping or whatever. Like, ah, uh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, he's talking about all that talk. So, yeah, we need to stop all that because, like, yeah, I look crazy and all uh, this and this and this. But I'm thinking, like, damn, that's how it, that's really how it started for real, for real, before it got into music. That's what we know as today. But <laughs> when you hear stuff like that, I mean, again, maybe he might be, cl- I ain't gonna say may, he may be cloud chasing, maybe, maybe not. But when you hear people talk like that, it's like, damn, they don't even want to hear people freestyle no more. <laughs> now, that's a little crazy. I, I, he might be talking more just the image because everybody doing the mic uh-huh. hanging down. It's just like everything's trendy now. Everybody going to do this and everybody going to do that. But, I mean, the freestyle part, I mean, now, if you make music, you don't want to hear people freestyle. It's crazy. Yeah. I feel like, damn, man, I like to hear a good Fab or Lord Banks every now and then, man. Facts. You like, big on, facts. Yeah, like a Davies, you know what I'm saying? Some chill shit, you know. But I don't know, man. I don't know what's up with these people. Now, will you be have you ever had a stand up where people, you know, got quiet or booed you or anything else like that? How was that? Boy, have I? <laughs> what? No, it grown with it, but it makes you tough. Like I had to put myself in uncomfortable water to come out on the other side. But I have film hidden on YouTube that I can release every time of me telling joke after joke, and all you hear is beers hitting bars and <laughs> motherfuckers slurping up their fingers because they got rants when they chicken wings. But the, the joke did not go. <laughs> now, as far as booing, now nah, we're everybody soft nowadays. They don't want to boo hurt your feelings. Maybe I just ain't found a tough enough crowd. <laughs> I've had a lot of times where I said something. And to me, it's funny. And I look at the crowd, and everybody's just looking. 
Like that wasn't it, my nigga. That fucking that weak. joke. That <laughs> weak. You like that one day? I be like, it ain't funny, nigga. And then you're like, hey, nah, you don't do that. <laughs> I get hecklers, yo. Trust you me, do? That one. Yeah, what? Come on. Um, I I do comedy for real. Like a lot of people got their sets. Don't talk to them. Nah. If you want special attention with me, you finna get that shit. Wait, what you want to talk about? I guarantee you're not gonna get me. And I'm the one with the mic. You're really in trouble. What was the best joke a heckler ever told you? Uh, best, uh, they don't really say though. They just, they just like to talk. I don't know why. Like I did a show at uh, one of my spots up here is a weed lounge it's called Peace of Mind, and a dude just came in, piggybacked off what I said, and he just kept he wouldn't shut up. Like yeah, you got your laugh, but then I try to go back to work, and he just keeps talking. And I'm like, all right, if you want to tell Joe, come up here, man. Here's the mic. Then he was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's easy to be funny in the crowd when you piggyback. Right. But when I get hecklers, more than likely, they're mad. Like, I had a table of females walk out on me because I kept saying bitch too much. So I was like, what would you rather me say? Right. Women? All right, cool. But then I just decided to be facetious and keep saying women, and then bitch slipped up by accident. And they put their kids on the leave, and I was like, "All right, bye, women." Like that's funny to me. I can't call you bitch, so I, I, I would have laughed at that. That's that. That shit is funny. Is that that? All right, see you later, women. <laughs> yeah, no, it was funny to me. I'm like, I don't know why, man. Like, you don't sound like you like women. What do you mean? I was like, I leave forty dollars all my hoes on the dresser. What are you talking about? I love them. <laughs> I was wild, bro. Yeah, seeing me on stage is yeah. <laughs> Oh my uh, god! You leave forty dollars on the table. Yeah, that's what I told him. I was like, I leave forty dollars for all my women. What you mean? <laughs> and they just look like. And then they had one dude with him. I'm sure I got him late that night. He's like, this fucking asshole comic. Uh, I hope he got some pussy out of him. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, I hope he did. And sitting over there talking. I mean, you know how people be. He probably was already had a boat of you. Just helped him out. Yeah, I really did, but. If I ever said chicken, yeah, she'll probably love you. You know, love and hate the same emotion. <laughs> okay. I'm fucking dead. I'm dead. <laughs> so, in 2024, what do you think is going to be your biggest goal? Or what are your biggest goals for this year? The ones that you can share. It's that you may keep some hidden, but the ones that you can share. As far as your goals for this year, what are you trying to reach? Uh, definitely get my social media numbers up. I need to get my following. Something crazy. I want to get that up, and I, I definitely I want to do a don't tell comedy show because those are just so fire to me that they're just in a hidden spot. And you just pop up and do it. I definitely want to get on one of those, and probably the biggest goal is travel like to these different states where my homies are and just give them a chance to see me work. Cause it's almost killing two birds with one stone. The homies get to see me, and I get to you know sort of get into a new location. So that's gonna be my motivation to travel this year. Mm-hmm. I like to see it, bro. Any places in mind you'd like to go to state wise? Um, I want to get down to Florida. I want to work Tampa for a little bit. Some just tell me to go to Tampa. I want to go back to Austin. Uh, try to hit Austin, and then really just wherever else I can figure out what place to go. But I know those two spots are really what I want to hit more than anything: Tampa uh-huh. and Austin. All right, now. How, I meant to ask you this question earlier, but how are you able to come together with your material? Like, do you take it from life experiences? Do you just like, of course, from social media? Like, how does that work for you when you come up with that? And how long of uh, a every, process? Uh, everything comes from, from life with me, really. I think that's the funniest to me. I'm not, I can probably sit here, write some dumb shit, make it sound funny, but that's just going to get played out to me. I'd rather just talk about, like, my life or things that have happened or just things that I'm passionate about. Like, my really, my comedy is more social commentary more than anything. Like, I talk about the stuff that we all do. We just don't talk about out loud that we do it. Mm-hmm. And then I throw in a little bit of, you know, some stories here and there from, like, things that I've done. So that, that my, the process, though, is what sucks because I've been a lot of partying in life, so my memory ain't like what it used to be. So I have to talk to the homies and they'd be like, you remember that one time? I'm like, oh shit, you're yeah. right. And then I got to go write it down. 
But my process, man, I really I sit at the same table that I'm at right now, and I'll just jot down on my book, maybe a thought, maybe an idea, write it down, come back to it, maybe a day or two later, maybe an hour later, just if something comes to me. But at least I got the idea down, and from there I just start to blossom it. And once I think I've got it punched up enough, then I'll go out and work it. And that process could be a week. You can take three months to get it to where you need it. It could be, even take longer, but just for me, it, it probably takes a maximum three months to get everything sounding how I want it. Then from there, going places and working it. And just the good thing with me working it, though, is it's never going to sound the same. So you can see me one night, see me the next night. It, it's going to be the same joke, but the way I present it, you're going to be like, where the fuck was this yesterday? Because that's just how much I think of it. It's, it's psychotic. I just always think about jokes and how to, you know, what can I do to enhance this, take this, do that. It's, you got to be like that. Yeah. That's what's up. Now, with your discipline to comedy, how how was that? Was that like a hard transition or was it something like you kind of more so grew into? Uh, I think I grew into it. Starting out for like maybe the first four or five months, I didn't even write shit down, bro. I just, I had ideas. I'd go on stage, do it. I would get by just because I was being funny. But thinking about it now, I wasn't really doing stand up, stand up. There wasn't no method to the madness. I was just up there talking my shit and it was going. So I had to really buckle down, you know, go study the people I like to study, see how they present things, and then. And from there, like, there was, like, a good eight-month period. I just turned into a psycho, bro. It was nothing but comedy. I didn't do nothing. I didn't get on the game. I didn't leave the house. I'd come to the crib, work on these jokes. All right, is this good? Cool. Traveling. Open mic, open mic, open mic. Come back. Do that. I just did that for so long. Just really got into a dark place and then came on another side. And now I have a – I could probably do 45 minutes right now if I wanted to, which is unheard of for somebody who's a year and a half in. How I got this much material. And it's solid. Wow. That's what's up, man. How are you able to deal with with the criticism of people when they say, like, oh, you can't do this, or you hear what people say, you're not funny, and all that other stuff? How are you able to have thick skin while dealing with that? Well, when I was bringing, yeah. fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I can't write what these people say, man, get on stage if you don't like what I'm doing, if you feel any type of way. I ain't never been told I wasn't funny, but I've been accused of like, oh, well, that might be transphobic, or that might, but it's like, I'm just t- talking about my life. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. All right. Like, you ain't got to be mad at me, but criticism, not nah, comes with it. But I just, I'm at the point where, like, people going to say what they're going to say. I got to do what I got to do. If, if you all going to talk, then talk. Ooh, anyway. I've done too much stuff. I'm like, doing music, I was criticized there. See, everybody's going to get criticized, bro. So you can't even look into that. So I, if anybody was to say anything, cool. But I actually have, like, some shit under my belt that kind of justifies the shit that I do. So you can't really. Mm-hmm. You say what you want to. Yeah, you. I got to do this. I got to do that. Cool. But what you going to do? Right. I hear that, big dog. So yeah, once you go ahead and let them know, man, where they could be able to follow you at on all social media platforms. And if you have any comedy videos that we can watch, <laughs> we can be able to check them out, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, YouTube, 140 Characters Podcast. Uh, we got the podcast up there. And I got the, the video clips from, like, the comedy shows. I got some hidden on the web, too. If you find those, I might give you cash prizes. They are hidden, hidden, but they solid. Um, other than that, Facebook, I had to change my real name, Jordan Bishop, but I am Jordan B on stage, LL Jordan B, Instagram, anywhere you type in Jordan B, if you see a big black motherfucker, more than likely it's me, hit the follow button, and hey, fuck with me, your local neighborhood comedian, baby. Hey, man, I appreciate doing the interview, man, again, it was an honor, hey, man, keep up, uh, hey, keep up the good work and keep doing your shit, man. Hell yeah, man. Hey, again, thank you for having me, man. The Wave 804, baby. VA got something to say, baby. <laughs> hey, if you ever down here, brother, how at me. You turn up, man. Nah, I got you, man, because, like, yo, I always wanted to, I always wanted to go, well, I've been to a comedy show. I seen Tommy Davidson at the uh, Funny Bone. He was actually pretty oh, funny. He, joke, he joked on me and my dad because we had striped outfits on. He was like, damn. Hey man, you a good father. Both of y'all just got out of jail. Uh, I was like, damn. Yo, you know, oh shit. Yeah, bro. He <laughs> rose the fuck out of us, bro. Like, I had to pee and 
he had to go pee. He was like, God damn, man. <laughs> this 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 not firing on us, man. But that shit was awesome. But I'm gonna definitely pull up, man. For real, for real. We're gonna have some oh, yeah. fun, man. For real. I can't wait to see you. Uh, yeah, holla at me, my brother. But thank you for having me, man, for sure. This was fun, man. Nah, no doubt, man. Next time, uh, I guess when uh shit, actually when I come out there, I wanna do like an interview before or afterwards, man, about your uh your show or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? You can be able oh, to have, post that joint on your page, man. Hell yeah, I'm with that, bro. Whatever you want to do, man. Let, let's work, man. All right. That's the best, man. Yes, sir. Thank so, you, man. y'all already know it's the Wave 804, man, with my man Jordan B, man. Y'all go ahead, check him out, go to his page, go to his YouTube channel. Another successful interview, and we out, man. It's the Wave 804.